Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and today is more of a follow-up video on a video I did about, oh, about a week or two ago on the higher end of affordable. In that video, I showed you a bunch of high-end pieces, including this uh, Marathon Seesaw, this automatic chrono that retails for around three grand. Uh, you should go back in the channel and check it out if you haven't seen it. I feature four watches. All of them are north of $1,000 and then ending at the Marathon at around 3000 uh, but what I found, you know, after I shot the video, or even during shooting the video, I, the idea popped in my head that a lot of these watches echo a, a certain style from lower cost options that we have in the store. Uh, so like that marathon bears a heck of a resemblance to this Orient Quartz Chrono. Uh, so what I did was I took the same four watches back out. Well, one of them is a little bit different, uh, but more or less the same four watches. And then I went back into inventory and I pulled a bunch out that I think echo, some of them really echo the style exactly, the look, um, maybe in a five second glance, you might think it's the same watch. The first one I'm going to show you, which is the Zeppelin, uh, it may take you a minute to realize they're different. Uh, but they all are much lower cost than the ones that I showed you. So we'll go through all four watches that I shot in the higher end video. And I'm going to also show you now what I consider to be the more cost-friendly alternative. Of course, they're not going to have automatic chronograph movements. Uh, they're not going to have all the accoutrements of the higher-end items. But still, they echo the same look and the same feel. So I thought this was a good affordables video now. You know, so now you saw the expensive ones. So now what can you get You know, if you're on more of a budget? I added up the four that were shown in that video. And I, they're somewhere around eight grand if you wanted to buy all four. Whereas if you want to buy the four substitutes I'll show you in this video, I think you'll spend about $1,000. So it's quite a difference, uh, and I'll show them all to you in a minute. Uh, first, my own wrist check. Uh, Sarb 033, still wearing it, still love it. And then this one, uh, Orient Sun and Moon in blue. Uh, when I wear this, I sometimes feel like, well, not really, but it's a poor comparison, but to wearing uh, Air Jordans in the 90s. Everybody wants this watch. Um, I own one. Uh, they are coming back later this year, uh, but it seems like everybody just wants it and they'll do anything to get one. Uh, one more thing. I know a lot of people comment and they ask, do you really wear two watches? I really do. Uh, I don't wear them all the time. I would say roughly 80% of the time I do wear two watches. I've been doing it for many years, probably close to six or seven years. Uh, you know, I've been in the business for over a decade, so I obviously have accumulated a lot of different watches. So this is a way, you know, to wear two of them at one time. And I'm a lefty, so you know, growing up, the the predominant watch hand for me was my right hand. Um, so now I wear one on my dominant hand as well. And is it weird? Yeah, but you get over it, you get used to it, just like anything else. You know, people that never wore a watch say so I can't wear one because it's not comfortable well you, you force yourself to do it and after a while it, it's second nature so yeah it's uh I do but what is kind of funny and you'll realize this if you do it is that your dominant wrist is just a tiny bit thicker than your non-dominant wrist so some watches actually I cannot wear uh, because they'll be too tight or too loose anyway enough about me let's take a look at the more affordable side of the higher end timepieces I've already showed you so if you recall in the last video I showed you a Zeppelin chronograph uh, powered by a Valjoux 7753. It was roughly, I believe it was about $2,000. Uh, and uh, this is the watch, or is it? Um, this is not the watch. The watch that I had up in the last video was this one. You can see they are extremely similar. At first glance, um, a lot of people actually take them to be identical. Uh, but they are quite different, and the right hand is what I did show you last week. This is a Valjoux 7753 powered chronograph made by Graf Zeppelin. And now this week, I want to show you its lower cost option. This is the Zeppelin 7680-1. It is a quartz operated chronograph. Also has an alarm at the 6 o'clock. You can see an alarm subdial. Ticking seconds here. And then it's got chronograph seconds uh, is the main wheel. And then minutes and hours are recorded on this subdial up here. You can see that. It's got a very similar dial, very similar feel. It's a little bit smaller in the case. So this guy is going to be 42 millimeters in diameter, 12 millimeters thick. Tip to tip is 48 millimeters. So it's still a nice size watch. It comes on a nice brown leather strap. 
22 millimeter lugs. Uh, just priced much differently. This one sells for around $379. It's extremely useful. You could say even more useful than the other one. Uh, it's certainly more accurate because it's quartz, but it's also got an alarm, which a lot of people really, uh, really dig. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice feature. It's got a sign Zeppelin buckle. Uh, screw down case back. Water resistant to 50 meters. You're not going to go swimming with this. This is certainly a dress watch in every sense of the every sense of the word. It operates like a regular chronograph would. You press the top right button, and the seconds hand moves. Uh, it will record the minutes and hours over here. You stop it, and then you reset it. And that that's the whole thing. It's got a date display. It's also got around the periphery a telemeter and a tachometer reading but just shows you the, you know what you can get if you're not you know if you're looking for this look in my right hand uh, but you don't have that kind of a budget if you know this is more your speed you know under $500 uh, this one certainly fits the bill this is a, a very good seller in the Zeppelin lineup and I've in you know there's good reason for it it's got this beautiful dial it's got a little bit of a dome to the dial it's that silvery white kind of feel just very elegant. And then in the last video, I showed you this weight of a marathon watch, the Cesar, uh, near $3,000. It's a lead weight. I mean, look, look how heavy it is. Big and bulky. Tritium tubes. Really nice watch. Another Valjoux powered chronograph, a 7750 in this case, day and date. And tritium tubes make it glow. So you can read it in all, in all sorts of light. Just a really, really nice watch. Of course, again, a little bit on the more expensive side. So today I picked something that I feel, felt really echoed this style, but on a much, much smaller budget. So here we have the Orient Captain Chronograph. I switched them up really quick there. Uh, so you can see when you just look, go from one to the other, they definitely echo the same vibe. Of course, they're nowhere near the same price tag. Uh, this watch retails for around $169, uh, so under $200. Bucks. It is a quartz chrono, as I mentioned. It comes on a rubber strap. It is 45 millimeters in diameter and 11.5 millimeters thick. Tip to tip, it comes in at a little over 50 millimeters, about 52 millimeters. So it's a decent size watch. It's got luminescence on the hands and the markers, not tritium. It's got normal luminescent paint, so it's charged by light. And then when you turn off the lights, it starts glowing. As I mentioned, it is a quartz chrono. So we'll push this button, and you can see the subdials at the top start moving, and those will be your fractions of a second. I can stop it and then start it. The running, the, excuse me, the central seconds hand is running elapsed seconds. You have normal time elapsed seconds over here at the nine. And then at the bottom, you have elapsed hours. So where are elapsed minutes taken care of? Well, let's fast forward and we'll see that in a minute. So I've let a couple of minutes elapse and you can see that at that subdial at the six, it was actually two hands. And the registers don't really make that very clear, uh, but you can see that there's a longer hand for minutes that have elapsed and there's a shorter hand for hours have elapsed. So it's a 12 hour counter. And it's set up just like the hands of a clock, or excuse me, just like the face of a clock. So the minute hand will revolve once, and that hour hand will tick over to the first index. Uh, the Zeppelin had a mineral crystal. I don't think I mentioned it. This also has a mineral crystal. It's water resistant to 200 meters. Uh, it has an oddball 23, 23 millimeter lug. Um, so your strap options are you know, somewhat limited. Uh, you could find stuff to fit it, or you could squeeze a 24 in there, shave it down, or squeeze in a 24 millimeter nylon strap. Screw down case back solid, you know, stainless steel case, all the usual stuff that you would that you would expect from a watch like this. So last video, you also might recall I showed you the shadow, the Diavis shadow, automatic, PVD blackout, yellow hands, yellow markers, various shades of black on the dial. So here, you know, this watch again was somewhere around fifteen hundred dollars, and I tried to get, I wanted to get something of similar look. Um, here you can have to use a little bit more of an imagination, but I, I picked watches that I feel echo the same, if you will, military or, or blackout vibe. So I actually picked two. They're both Tracer watches. So the first one I want to show you 
is the Red Alert T100. So this watch uses T100 tubes, which uh, emit more light or more radiation than your standard T25 tubes. This is not normal luminescence. This always glows. Um, I picked it because it's got the shot of red in it, the red hands. I feel it, you know, the, the, the Diavis was yellow on mostly black. This is red on mostly black. So I feel it has a similar kind of pop feel to it. This is on a NATO strap. This is going to come in at around 600 bucks. Uh, it's powered by a, a Ronda 715 movement. Uh, of course, it's all PVD. It's a 44 millimeter case. It's about 13 millimeters thick. The tip to tip is around 47 millimeters. We now have a sapphire crystal, so that's a nice upgrade from some of the other watches we already saw. 200 meters water resistant and a 22 millimeter lug. So obviously it's quartz driven, so it's going to be very accurate, and that, that helps get the cost down. This is all Swiss made, so maybe not as inexpensive as we'd like to see it, uh, but it does have something really cool that is a little bit of an industry first. When you shut the lights out, the bezel glows, which, you know, some companies started doing within the last couple of years. Tracer just started it. I believe this is the first watch that does it for them. Uh, the hands, the seconds hand, the markers. So you have a 12 o'clock orange dot for your registration points. All the markers on a dial glow. And then, like I said, the bezel glows. Nice 60 click bezel. Very solid. Tracer is owned by a company called MB Microtech. MB Microtech makes Tracer watches. But what MB Microtech also does is they make the gas tubes. They're a, a large company in Switzerland. They make the tubes that go into their watches. They also make the tubes that go into gun sites and many, many other industries that use tritium light tubes. So if I really pull in there for a close-up, you know, you can see the tube on the seconds hand. You can see the tube on the hour and minute hands. Just really nice. And then while I have this one up, another one that's kind of reminiscent, and well, because it's my channel and my store, I can do what I want. This is a new Tracer that came in recently. It's a limited edition. It's around $430. It's 45 millimeters by around 12 millimeters thick. Similar lug to lug size. Sapphire crystal, nylon strap, 200 meter water resistant, 22 millimeter lug and it's quartz operated by a Ronda movement. So you'll see it has tubes. Uh, it's got a blackout bezel. So there's no loom on the bezel. There's loom on the hands, the seconds hand, and the markers. Day and date. What's interesting about this piece is that the lights are red, white, and blue. And this is a like a special USA edition. You can see the blues, the whites, and the reds. And what that is, if you would kind of look at the USA flag, this would be the blue portion up here, the stars on the blue background, and then the red and the white is your stripes. It's pretty cool. It's, an, it's a nice uh, recognition to the US flag. And like I said, this is a limited piece. It, com it comes on this nylon strap, and it also comes on rubber. So the last watch I showed you was a Laco Ocean. Now this is not the same one I showed you. I had mentioned to you in the last video that there is a blackout version. This is that blackout version. This is the 7 Cs, uh, model number 861704, uh, around $1,600. All the specs are the same to what I mentioned last week, except it's in a PVD. I wanted to really bring this one up to the camera so you could see it. Um, obviously, glows great just like the other one did. I guess this is a real tactical feeling watch. Um, you know, it's powered by an automatic. You can see it's not moving. I'll give it a shake to get it going. Uh, but very military feeling. And what I picked for this was something at the total, total opposite end of the price spectrum, coming to under $200. Now, this is also an auto. It's powered by a Miyota 8215. It's 43 millimeters in diameter. It's 14 millimeters thick. Tip to tip, it's 49 millimeters. Solid screw down case back. This is model number T0303. Mineral crystal, 20 millimeter rubber dive strap. No, no decompression time limits are imprinted on the strap. That's pretty cool. I mean, most people have this stuff memorized, um, but it's just a nice nod to have it on there. It's got a couple of protrusions from the case. I know people get confused. These are not buttons. They're just adornment. They are there, in my opinion, just to kind of balance off the case a bit. Uh, but anyway, it is an automatic. 
has the date. It's got luminescence. So it glows very well, quite easy to read. It does have a nice bezel. It's a 120 click unidirectional bezel. You know, just really, I'm not gonna say it's not the same watch. I'm not gonna say it's the same watch because it, it certainly isn't, but it gives you that same feel uh, that the Ocean did. Uh, that tactical feel. It's got large number. It's got large dots for the dial. Very easy to read. Very simplistic. Extremely uncluttered. But for 189 or you know under 200 dollars, uh, it really gives you the same look uh, on on a much tighter budget. So that does it for all the comparisons. I'll throw these on the wrist, and then we will finish up the video. So the first one up is the Zeppelin 7680-1 Quartz Chronograph. Looks great. Feels great. The case is not too large for my six and three quarter inch wrist. Lays perfectly. The brown strap is a really nice complement to the dial and the look. Next one up is the Orient Captain Chronograph, the Marathon's half brother. Still fits me fine. Looks great. Sporty. The rubber strap is extremely extremely comfortable. Next up is the Tracer T100 Red Alert. This has the T100 Tritium tubes. Uh, the red, white, and blue watch would wear exactly the same on me. They're at very similar sizes. This is just a really good looking piece. Uh, check it out with the lights out. It's just bad. It's really cool. And the last one up is the Talkmeister T0303. This really, really looks great. I mean, check out the sandblasted case. Great finishing. Wears like a nice tactical watch. Very simple uncluttered dial. Easy to read. Really cool. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you some low-cost alternatives to the affordable watches uh, that I showed you in a prior video from the $3,000 Marathon that you see in the background to the under $200 Orient that you see here from the $2,000 Zeppelin Chronograph to the under $400 model that I have in my right hand. If you like this video, please like it. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so at this time. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.